Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Mr. Dogboat33, and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4 Kaiser Redux as the Republic of Ireland. Last video, uh, Black Monday hit, so we're working on getting it. Uh, f well, we're working on getting our economy out of a shitter. So we'll. We'll get there soon enough, methinks. But we gotta get there first. Any whom? Uh. Let's see, do we wanna. Oh, we can't even do this till 37. All right, let's get working on revitalizing the north then. After 25 ceasefire, the northernmost re region of Ulster has been an industrial slump relative to the rest of the nation. Belfast once used to be a thriving industrial city, and other towns and cities such as Derry and Coleraine were looking likely to follow. Revisiting the issue and energizing the north with the industrial investment will help to lift the region. Yeah, the water bottle thing is a goal when you're in your old room with no bathtub. What was the plan then if that happened? We would play that by ear. That's what would happen. Um. Alright. The government has ordered extensive funds be made to the rapid industrialization of our nation. Too many Irish men and women are without jobs. Many British-owned factories were closed down when Ireland gained her independence and have been since fallen into disrepair. Ireland's industry lacks any real focus or direction, despite the population being eager and ready to work. It is up to the government to decide just how much of an investment into the civilian industry they wish to make. A major mount. Ireland can rise to greatness. Coleraine is a shithole even now, so we're thinking in this world it might not be. Huh. Hey. Alt history is alt history for a reason, I suppose. I'll take your word on it, Kev. I mean, I might have not have to take it for much longer, but... For now, I'll just take your word for it. Keep working on computing. Socialist victory in Russia... Oh! They're doing the 4th International. That's interesting. Nuclear bombs might spruce up the place. True. Well, um... Russia's gonna be busy for a while here. Annie Kenny, they got a woman over there. Let's see if that does anything to screw us over. <clears throat> On Monday, the 24th of April, 1916, members of the Irish Volunteers, Irish Citizen Army, and Cumanumban seized key locations in Dublin and declared an, a free Irish Republic. Surrounded by vastly superior numbers and artillery of the British Army, they fought on for six days before eventually surrendering. Most of the leaders of the Rising were executed, although it lost at the time, it would subsequently lead to Ireland's war of independence and freedom after several hundred years under British rule. Today's the 20th anniversary, and celebrations and parades have taken place all over Ireland, including a thundering speech from the President Collins, emphasizing the need to protect the freedom of, that Patrick Purse and his comrades died for. For slave leaf, for slavery fled, or glorious debt when he fell in the fog you do. Nuclear bombs might spruce up the place, damn. That bad. Um. Probably want to swap these guys over to these these units. There's some national congress. Oh. Starting off the bat aggressively. Let's 
As every year on the 24th of April, the Irish people gather together as one to celebrate and mourn the rising in 1916. Despite having been a nominally, do, nominally a failure, it was the rising that gave birth to Free Ireland, and all but Ulster view the day with great reverence. <clears throat> this year being the 20th anniversary of the rising was home to much more grand festiveness than usual. usual. This being the case, very few took note of the posting all around Ireland, the proclamation of a group claiming to be the Executive Council of the Second Doyle. Chaired by Sean O'Calla himself, an elected member of Ireland's Second Doyle, the group translated their legitimate authority to what they call the Army Council of I the IRA, as was their right as per resolution based by the First Doyle. Of course, when the day was done, people did finally start to take note of such a strange proclaimant. Nothing was expected to come out of such an odd occurrence, however, with just a few weeks past its posting, the Army Council's issue an ultimatum to our government, which they consider to still be the Free State. Acting less like an ultimatum, more like a manifesto, the document sent in a marked letter, detailed in for details in brief the legitimacy of the Army Council, explains their aims, and finally concludes with demands. The Army Council explains their legitimacy by stating that they represent the final remnants of the I I Irish Republic proclaimed in 1916. They claim that they can trace their legitimacy legacy to the IRA splitting upon the signing of the Anglo-Irish Treaty. With those against the treaty carrying on the fight even when Collins declared an end of the free state upon the British Revolution. As for the so-called Executive Council, they made up of members of Second Doyle. With the Second Doyle never formally dissolving itself, they came to carry on its mission. The Army Council's goals are simple, the complete abolishing of the anglo irish Treaty and everything associated with it, and the reestablishment of the true Republic of 16. Despite these quite grandiose claims, the IRA, even with the support of the Executive Council, are quite fringe. Although this position did once share some popularity, mostly among Sinn Féin, with the 32 County Ireland finally free, however, almost all of its popular support dried up. Even Sinn Féin dropped it, it, their support in its most recent Arthais. Although this did cause a split in the party, wherein Sean O'Colic, party president, along with few others, left in defiance. Due to its almost non-existent popular support, a majority of those within the government believe that such an ultimatum will lead nowhere. It's just that our current measures are more than enough. However, a few believe that we should ramp up anti-terrorism measures before more civilians get hurt or worse. A very small minority actually believe we should sit down and work out some kind of deal. After all, we can, can become the true republic, there will be nothing left to fight for. Either way, Collins is expected to make a decision soon, lest the situation, already tense situation, get even worse. Hmm. Little joke we had about cold we were about a city called Larna. Something goes. Breck News Chairman, Chairman President launched a nuclear strike against Larna. Nobody knows it's anything different. Huh. It's a bit weird, but wouldn't there be a Republican movement against the government? This guy's right being angry. Uh, treated was the United Ireland and it was just civil war. War between pro and anti treaty forces happened. I don't. Mm, yeah. Um, is this just Kaiser Redux lore? Because this seems like an excuse to have, like, a trouble situation. Or a bit more of a trouble si I don't know. You probably know more than I, Kev. Because I don't... Does this affect anything with the guides? You know, perhaps something is to be gained with, from peace. Arrange a meeting with this army council. There are a lot of Republicans who recognize the Republic because they view it as a British puppet state, set up a free state after Anglo Irish Treaty partition. Hmm. New allies for North. Next, let's go ahead and do the National Industrial Investment Fund. 
Constructing and expanding our nation's industry is vital to, if Ireland is going to play any sort of key role in the world stage in the future. We need to make funds available to finance rapid industrialization projects. This will allow us more room for expansion, more efficient construction, depending on how we, much funds we make available. So there's no civil war, there's no tragedy, there's a new British pop, government to be puppeted to. And most importantly, no partition. Yeah. Yeah. Socialism lives on, it seems. And then the Far Eastern Republic is... Not so far in the east anymore. Uh... What? I'll read that later. Following the commencement of the IFI initiative, the Irish Department of Industry and Commerce decided on perhaps a rather obvious choice to kickstart Ireland's economy. Alcohol! Yeah, that makes perfect sense, honestly. Ireland's long and proud tradition of producing Irish whiskey, but much of the production is done in small, family-run distilleries throughout the countryside. Bro's Sourstat development will open up several alcohol factories and produce produ some much-needed employment for our nation. The location for the development has yet to be decided, only that it should be in one of our less industrially developed regions. We'll do Moonster, the benefit most from the profits. Big boy Kolchak, holy fuck indeed. After a long intense series of meetings between the Army Council of the IRA and the government of President Collins, two sides have released a joint statement officially announcing that they have come to an agreement. The agreement, officially called the Belfast Agreement, due to the meetings taking place in Ulster's capital, in essence answers every objection that the Army Council had against the Republican government. First and foremost, the Republic of Ireland, declared by President Collins, using machinery shall be of the free state and considered by the IRA, to in its nature still be the free state, shall be completely dissolved in its place. The Irish Republic, declared in 1916, and continues on by the IRA, shall be given control of Ireland. Secondly, the anglo irish Treaty itself, already discarded in all but name by the Republic, shall be declared null and void. Thirdly, the caretaker government, headed by the Collins, has show goodwill, but still made up of members of the Army Council, along with a quorum of a Doyle, shall rule over the Republic till 37 elections. Fourthly, the Shaned Iran shall be temporarily dissolved. However, the body shall reform following the up-and-coming 37 elections. Fifthly, Every law passed by the first doors of the free state shall be adopted by the Irish Republic. Although, following the 37 election, the Doyle shall be the third to coincide with the second finally closing. Finally, I'm surprised they didn't go sixthly for that one. The IRA and our own defense force shall be merged, and leadership of both shall combine. On effect, very little will truly change. In mind of these legitimists, Ireland shall be under its rightful government. Even despite this, the agreement has yet to be ratified by the Doyle, as many few view it as a needless and worthless change to win over such a small amount of the population. As the debate within the Irish Parliament comes to a close, it appears that... It looks like the only thing it's going to do is change the fucking name. And I don't know if I want to pronounce... Poblakna Hira. Iron. However you say, I don't even know how to say that. I mean, I guess I'll check. We actually get troops, Matt. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'll take the troops. Um, we need troops anyway, so I'll take that, I guess. Today from atop the Aras Ahn uh, Pre President Michael Collins declared that Republic Island has been formally dissolved. Far from being a coup revolution, the Republic dissolving comes as a result of the Belfast Agreement Treaty between Collins and its government, the remnant of the IRA. 
and the agreement the Republic of Ireland was to be formally dissolved, replaced by the original Irish Republic, declared in 1916 during the Easter Uprising, which the IRA claimed to be the legitimate heirs of. The government reestablished the Irish Republic has been, care been given a caretaker government made of members of the Irish Army Council, which decided to allow Collins to remain president at least up until the 37 Irish elections. Exactly what is going to change in Ireland as a result of the Belfast Agreement remains to be seen. Here we go, bro. I mean that. That's interesting, I guess. I don't think that does shit, really, but... You know what? Why not? We'll just, uh... We'll go with it. Why not? Well, to join the Third International. Why not? Oh, jeez. The city just can't take a break. Oh. Ratification of the Belfast Agreement and the reestablishment of the Irish Republic across all 32 counties, fractured Sinn Féin party has formally reunited itself. As part of the reunion, the break off led by Sean Ukala has formally dropped the process of abstentionism. While the process was mainly painless, the exact details of reunification are a bit puzzling. Both parts of the party and their statements of reunion welcomed the other half back into the fold. The reason for this strange warning is due to the fact that both claim to be the true Sinn Féin party. Regardless of the strange warning with the two halves reunited, Sinn Féin is bigger and stronger than ever. The legacy of Griffith, Griffith lives on, it, it seems. Malta number one superpower. True. I should find it's fucking huge now as well. Holy shit. Construction of the Sourstat alcohol factories have finished. Now the nation can enjoy the benefits. The factories not come without their expenses, but there's no doubt they'll be good for public morale as well as the economy in the long run. Slante. Slante. Uh, fucking cheers. That, that's what I'm pretty sure that's supposed to say. More civilian factories. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. Come on, next new king. Let's do a financial industrial capital in Dublin. The rise of cynicalism in Britain has created a void in the British Isles that Ireland could potentially fill. Non-cynical nations could look to Ireland as a lead trade nation situated in the Atlantic between the American and European continents. Some effort and plenty of foreign lobbying, Dublin could be the next London. Slancha. The government's decision to orchestrate the creation of the National Fund for investing in Irish industry has been received well by the public. Recent economic development in the nation has been seen as encouraging sign that Doyle is committing to completing Ireland's economic rebirth. The creation of the NIIF will allow for the development of specialized construction companies to facilitate the purchase of building materials to keep the wheels of industrialization turning. We'll massively invest in the fund and get those factories built. Beautiful. Quite an adventure. Construction one. Hmm. Today, during a routine meeting, President Collins and his cabinet made up a former IRA Army Council. Among the more mundane manners was a proposed plan by Sean Russell, Minister of Interior. Once the IRA's Quartermaster General, Russell was considered by many to be one of their most radical leaders within the IRA. Indeed, the plan proposed by Russell seems to confirm this. Calling it the Sabdosh Campaign, or S Plan for short, the plan calls for the smuggling of Irish agents and various m explosive devices into the Union of Britain to be used against economic, military, and civilian targets. The brainchild of Seamus O'Donovan and Russell. The plan, if approved, would aim to create chaos within Britain, both to sway them from invading Ireland, soften them up for counter-invasion. Irish agents, w with this 
with tacit support of the government, would integrate themselves into the British society, scout out the best targets for bombing, and execute those attacks. Without question, this plan is radical and would do no doubt ruin any chance we would have for reconciling with the Union, if such a wish was of the government. Beyond that, the amount of potential deaths, be them civilian or otherwise, could be quite significant. Yet there is indeed an amount of logic behind the campaign. By having chaos at home, Britain would have to be, have a harder time maintaining an operation against us as resources would need to be spent to maintain order. Either way, with the Doyle dissolved until the 37th election, choices President Collins is alone to make. Subsequent tags which get all 10 foreign investments, it fucking supercharges you. No kidding. Um, proof of plan. We'll, we shall humble Perfidious Albion. Free Intelligence Agency. Sounds like a terrible idea, but it's also really funny. Yeah, it sounds funny. Uh, so that's what I'm banking on there to get us through. Work on the next generation of artillery. I think we'll just go ahead and leave it there. But yeah, thanks for always for watching. You can like if you like, just like if you didn't, leave any comments, feedback down in the comments section below. What the fuck is this? Why the fuck did they do that? Why did they only take half of the fucking country? That's fucking stupid. Anyway, that's my little mini rant. Like, like, just like, if you didn't, leave all that down in the comment section below. I real comments, I appreciate it. I don't that for me. Check out my links down in the uh, description box below. And hit the sub button to get updated with these uploads weekdays as well as occasionally Saturdays. That's all the time I have for now, my friends. I thank you all for watching. My name has been Mr. Dogboat 53 and we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye now.